Hey everyone, Joe Brady here. I'd like to welcome you to an introduction to portrait lighting solutions. I want to talk about the differences between studio strobes, like my Hensel unit behind me, versus speed lights versus continuous lights. There are places for all of these lighting solutions and it depends on what it is you're trying to do. Speed lights are a tool that pretty much every photographer, certainly every photographer that's doing portraits has probably used. Continuous lights, maybe that as well. I've got continuous lights obviously lighting me here on the set. For doing a lot of portrait work, I will then go to studio strobes. And I want to talk about why, which is the right tool for which kind of job. And I also want to dispel some myths where you might think that these are expensive, but they really aren't. Studio lighting is an investment that every portrait photographer needs to make. A professional grade set of studio strobes like these Hensel lights behind me provides you with a set of creative and money making tools you can use for many years. Now why speed lights and continuous lighting can do great things. They're tools that have a different set of qualities. Let's take a look at what each one does and then where studio lighting excels. Let's chat first about speed lights. Now speed lights are small, portable and versatile. They're tools every photographer uses and they can do a lot of different jobs. If you're taking portraits occasionally and don't shoot in a rapid fire way, speed lights will work just fine. We all use them, they're essential gear. So why not use speed lights for all your studio portrait work? Well, as great as they are, speed lights do have limitations. And if you're serious about portrait photography, you don't want to be limited. So what are these limitations you need to think about? Let's take a look at cost first. Now you might be saying, well, cost is something speed lights have a great advantage over studio strobe mono lights. But stop and think about the cost of name brand lights compared to a starting set of mono lights. In this case, let's compare them to the Hensel Integra 300 Mini. This is a perfect starter set for someone new to studio lights. Not picking on anyone in particular, but let's use, for example, the Canon 600EX RT to the Integra 300 and look at the price. 479 versus 485. This light system only costs six dollars more. So what does that six dollars get you? What advantages does the studio light have over the speed light? Well first of all power. This is a 300 watt second light. Speed lights at their top are about 70 watt seconds so these are about four times the power. What does this increase in power bring you? Perhaps the greatest advantage is when you start using light shapers. To try and match the power output of one monolight you'd need to put four speed lights in a big softbox to try to evenly distribute the same amount of light. Now you spent almost four times as much as you would for one Integra 300 Mini with a system that at full power might give you 30 or 40 shots before they just completely overheat and stop working. Batteries. You're going to go through a lot of batteries on your speed lights if you're shooting a lot. And if you've ever taken out four batteries that have just about died in your speed light and tried to hold them, you get a sense about how hot they are. Heat is the enemy of electronics. If you constantly run your strobes, or your speed lights rather, so that the batteries are so hot you can barely hold them, that is not good for the inside of your speed light and is going to decrease its life. How about recycling speed? If you're the kind of portrait shooter that likes to shoot rapid fire, you've got your model moving around, you don't want to miss anything, these speed lights will fire continuously at a very rapid pace. Not something you can do with a speed light. I can just keep popping and keep going and keep going and keep going. By the way, when you see on the video where you, you see sometimes the lights on the top, sometimes the lights on the bottom, sometimes it doesn't even show up. That's because the duration of the flash is fitting in between each of the video frames. Remember video is about 30 frames a second and there's a little gap in between each frame. Well, if the flash happens to fall in that gap, it's not, you're not going to see it. But believe me, it is firing. If you really want to fine tune your exposures, speed lights move up and down in one third stop increments. Studio lights like these again are in tenths of a stop. So each of these clicks, if I click up on the button, you can see going up five, one, five, two, five, three, five, four. That's one tenth of a stop increments. That gives you a lot more sensitivity and a lot more precision when you're calculating your ratios. And even if you're not doing portraits, let's say you're doing still lifes, very fine control over those tenths of a stop is important. Now something else studio lights have that speed lights do not have is a modeling light. As you see I've got on here coming through this strip softbox. What a modeling light does is two things actually. First of all it lets you see the patterns of light that the light is casting before you take a bunch of shots. Number two if you're dealing with speed lights in a darkened studio your camera might have trouble focusing. 
the modeling lights put out enough light so that you can actually still focus in a dark studio without adding any light other than what's going to actually land on your subject. Now this power also brings you something else. It gives you the ability to use large light shapers with very smooth transitions. Let me grab one as an example. So here's a nice big light modifier. This is a three foot by four foot softbox, or as Hensel calls it, a 90 by 120, which is in centimeters. Uh, one of the things I love about the Hensel modifiers, by the way, is they're extremely well made, but they're also extremely light, and they're also extremely easy to put together. I'll do another video that shows some of that, because if, if you've ever dealt with a modifier or a light shaper this big, and you've tried to bend the metal supports into the ring, Sometimes you have to be a weightlifter or have friends just to get it done. Not so with these. They're very light, which puts a lot less strain on the front of the light and also a lot less on the mount going into the stand because it doesn't make the light start to droop after time. I'm going to go ahead and mount this big softbox onto the front of the Mini. So I'm just going to take off, take off that little reflector with a grid. So I'm just going to, as I knock down my studio lights, I'm just going to grab the inside of the ring you just simply push the leather back to retract the rings, and it's that easy. Now, if you tried to use a speed light in a softbox this big, it's not going to work. Well, it's going to work. It's going to put out light, but it's not going to be particularly even. One of the beauties of softbox is they do put out a beautiful even light that fades gradually as it leaves your subject. You're not going to be able to do that with a speed light. You'd have to have a smaller softbox. Now, I don't mean this as a diss to speed lights. Speed lights are great tools, but just like in your toolkit, you're not going to use a screwdriver when you need a hammer. Studio strobes are a great investment to, for anybody doing portrait photography because they're just going to continue work. And the thing I love about the Hensel system is they've given you a way to get into the system without spending a huge amount of money. As I mentioned, this light costs basically the same as the Canon speed light, yet, you're going to get so much more for your money. You're also going to want to have speed lights. As I said, if you're a wedding photographer, event photographer, yes, you need something small and portable, particularly if you want to throw it on top of the camera. Speed lights are great for the occasional portrait. They're great for being out on the road, out in the field. But in the studio for portraits, really, this is the way to go. This is an investment you need to make. Uh, let's talk a little bit about continuous lights. Also have a place. One of the things about continuous lights is, as bright as they look to your eyes, they're actually putting out very little light. You're going to have to go up in ISO if you want to maintain the same kind of aperture that you're going to get in studio lights. So where do continuous lights fit? Well, we found a couple of times where they do work well, when they actually are necessary. One, if you're a pet photographer, some pets don't like the flashing of the strobe, so continuous lights are good for that. Same thing with not necessarily newborns, but small children, maybe... 10 months to two years, the strobes can bother them. Now, my wife runs our portrait studio, and we do a lot of school photography. We found that continuous lights are a much better choice for special needs children or children that have trouble with bright lights, and there's a lot of them. Though in that case, the continuous lights are the way to go. They're inoffensive. There's no flashes that are gonna throw anybody off, so that is a great place for them. One thing that's a problem using continuous lights for portraits if you're not careful. If you have the brightness of them turned up, even though, again, they look really bright, they're nowhere near as bright as a studio strobe, but they're still pretty bright to your eyes, particularly if you're using them in a dark room. And what happens is if you let your subject look at them before they're ready, their pupils close and you end up with little tiny dots of black in the middle of their eyes rather than a normal looking eye. So it is something to be cognizant of. Again, they are they have, they have great uses, but just be aware that there are some limitations as well. Use the right tool for the job. And I think you're going to find, if you want to do studio portraits, or even you want a small kit that you're going to take to locations where you need to be efficient and you need to use all your light shapers, studio lights are the way to go. So that's just a quick overview of the difference between studio lights, speed lights, continuous lights. Pick the right tool for the job, but if you want to do studio portraits, this is the right tool for that job.